like a javelin piloted by someone who can't keep an eye on the overheating meter, Anthem was in for a rough landing. What should have been the triumphant return of Bioware's first all-new RPG in years was marked by mission design complaints, bizarrely varying launch times for different versions of the game, and, yes, performance issues. A number of post-release patches have addressed some of the more egregious problems, but for anyone who didn't buy Anthem on day one, there may still be lingering worries about how the game runs on PC. The good news is that performance has improved by 15-20% since the original beta, but mid-range and budget graphics cards still struggle to maintain 60fps on higher settings, and having a fast CPU is still beneficial. We've tested Anthem with 27 graphics cards, 7 CPUs and several gaming laptops, with the graphics cards, motherboards and laptops provided by our partner MSI. Anthem, like many games built on the Frostbite engine, can look great and run smoothly, but the hardware requirements are steep. In terms of GPUs, you'll need at least an AMD Radeon RX 570 or GTX 1060 for a steady 60fps at 1080p with medium settings. That's not too bad, but for 1080p Ultra you're looking at the GTX 1660 Ti and RX Vega 56, or better, in order to average 60fps. Anthem is also one of the many games where 144fps is very difficult. You'll need both a fast CPU as well as an RTX 2070 graphics card to get there, at 1080p and minimum quality. Anthem includes a variety of settings to tweak, and the latest updates have added an FOV setting. I've tested using the four presets, but if you're looking to fine-tune your settings, check out the full write-up on PCGamer.com. The individual options can each affect performance by 5-10%, with lighting, vegetation and texture quality being the three most demanding. For benchmarking, I've included both current and previous generation AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, running with an overclocked Intel Core i7-8700K. For CPU testing, I've used an RTX 2080, running with CPUs covering a range of options. Starting with the low preset at 1080p, the good news is that while Anthem doesn't run amazingly well on low-end graphics cards, it runs okay if you're willing to turn the fidelity down. AMD's RX 560 and Nvidia's GeForce GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti all average above 40fps, with 97% of that above 35fps or higher. Mid-range cards vary between around 120fps on a GTX 1660 Ti, to 74 FPS on a 4.5 year old GTX 970. Dropping to 720p, AMD's Vega 11 integrated graphics manages 44 FPS as well, but even at minimum settings, Intel's UHG Graphics 630 fails to break 20 FPS. If you're okay with 30 FPS though, just about any dedicated graphics card made in the past 5 years should suffice. Medium quality represents a moderately difficult step up, dropping performance about 20% from the low preset. Thankfully, you still won't need an expensive GPU to get Anthem running smoothly. The RX 574GB and GTX 1060 3GB both average more than 60fps, with just the occasional dip below. The GTX 1050 Ti also keeps within that 40-50fps range for the most part, although the GTX 1050 and RX 560 come uncomfortably close to the bare minimum 30fps mark. At the same time, if you've got a much more powerful graphics card and want to take full advantage of a high refresh rate monitor, it's a little concerning to see how few GPUs are reaching those extreme frame rates at this relatively undemanding stage. 13 graphics cards could average 120 FPS or more on the low preset, but only the 6 most powerful can do so at medium quality, and only 3 break 144 FPS. Where Anthem really gets tough is at the high preset, where most of the GPUs drop around 25-30% compared to medium quality. Even at 1080p, you need at least a GTX 1660 to average 60fps, or a Vega 56 if you want minimums above 60. The affordable but still powerful cards like the RX 580 and GTX 1060 6GB fail to make the cut. They do come close, but also suffer from big dips down into the 40-45fps range, and the entry-level GPUs we've been following so far can't keep a steady at 30fps. Again, no higher tier GPU can come close to 144fps, and only two, the Titan RTX and RTX 2080 Ti, can scrape above 120 FPS. The jump from high up to ultra quality doesn't have as much of an effect at least, with performance only falling 10% on most graphics cards. The story is basically the same as 1080p high. Budget GPUs are out of the picture, and only the GTX 1660 Ti or Vega 56 and above will break 60 FPS. Mid-range cards can just about manage but not quite hit 60fps, while premium GPUs continue to run smoovely. It's not enough to max out 144Hz refresh rates, but G-Sync and FreeSync displays will still work nicely. 
Stepping up to the even bigger challenge of 1440p Ultra, high-end GPUs go from being recommended to being essential. Even the GTX 1080 and RX Vega 64 don't quite average 60fps, with the RTX 2070 and Radeon 7 only just squeaking by. There's a big gap between the RTX 2080 and the 2080 Ti now, over 20%, which isn't too surprising. At more demanding settings, the fastest GPUs finally get to strut their stuff. And if you're hoping to keep minimums above 60fps, only the Titan RTX and RTX 2080 Ti will suffice, with the RTX 2080 sitting back at 76fps, and that's with occasional dips below 60. Not even the RTX 2080 Ti can average 60fps at 4K Ultra, though the Titan RTX gets there barely. That puts Anthem alongside Assassin's Creed Odyssey in the pantheon of not quite 4K friendly games. In fact, only a select few of the tested GPUs even manage to break 30fps, so if you're determined to play with the highest quality and the highest resolution, you'd better have at least an RTX 2070. Just be prepared to play close to the 30fps mark if you do. You can just about double performance at 4K with the low settings, but that still only gets you maybe 6 cards above 60fps. The good news is that if you're only looking for 60fps, CPU bottlenecks aren't going to be a major problem. Just about every CPU we tested will average 60fps or more, provided your graphics card is fast enough. Once you get to ultra quality, however, CPUs with less than 12 threads do seem to take a hit on minimum FPS. Overall, CPU performance seems to have improved about 20% in some cases compared to our beta testing. The bad news is you'll still need a fast graphics card, and Intel's Core i7 and i9 CPUs are clearly leading anything AMD currently offers. The 8700K is 25% faster than the 2700X at 1080p low, and still nearly 20% faster at 1080p ultra. Even 1440p still shows a 10% advantage, while 4K drops to 8%. AMD's fastest Ryzen CPUs generally stay close to the i5-8400, but it will likely take Ryzen 3000 to top it. At least everything short of the Ryzen 5 2400G APU is able to break 60fps with the RTX 2080 at 1440p. Switching to laptops, the mobile RTX 2060 ends up basically tied in performance with the RTX 2070 Max-Q. They both have similar power requirements of 80 to 90 watts, which makes the 2070 Max-Q rather questionable at this point. The RTX 2080, meanwhile, is held back by the slower clocked mobile CPU, dropping performance below every desktop card except the 1060 at lower settings and basically only matching desktop RTX 2060 performance. Something else worth pointing out is that all the free laptops feature higher refresh rate displays, 120Hz for the GL63 and 144Hz for the GS75 and GE75. Unfortunately, even at minimum settings, Anthem doesn't come close to taking advantage of these higher refresh rates. In Anthem's defence, it has the capacity to be an extremely good looking game, built on an engine that's famously difficult when it comes to crafting open worlds. It's also not completely out of reach for lower spec PCs, and 1080p low and medium are both viable settings for the most affordable graphics and CPUs. Nevertheless, getting it to run at higher quality settings, particularly at 1440p or 4K, proves to require a heavy hitting set of hardware. We've mentioned 30fps as an acceptable minimum, but considering the often chaotic and fast-paced combat in Anthem, you really should be targeting a steady 60fps. 30fps may be fine for chatting with the denizens of Fort Tarsis, but when you're out in the Outlands getting into fast-paced, jet-assisted, gun and space magic fights with hordes of enemies, the stutters and sluggishness of a lower frame rate detract from the fun. Anthem has been out for a few months now, and given the reception and flaws, we wouldn't expect too much in the way of further performance optimizations. Bioware has explicitly committed to a program of future patches outside the expected DLC stream, so there's still hope that things will improve, but performance is arguably the least of Anthem's problems. Thanks again to MSI for providing the hardware for our testing of Anthem. We'll be looking at performance in more games in the future, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.